Welcome back to another Sims 4 video. Today we're building a micro home. Uh, I, I just kind of felt like it, you know, it's been a few weeks since there's been a video on the channel. I went away to Sydney. I saw my family for the first time in like seven or eight months. So that was really nice. Had a great time, but we're, we're back. And I thought, you know, let's do a build. It's been a little while. We, we did a few builds a little while back, but let's do a little build. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, but yeah, I thought this would be fun because it. I feel like the the thing that I love about the tiny homes, at least in The Sims 4, uh, especially is all the boosts <laughs> that you get because we've been doing so many of the scenarios and I want to keep doing scenarios because they're fun to try and uh, see how quickly we can do them. With the, the tiny homes, you just get all the skill boosts and not just the skill boosts, the gardening boosts, the relationship boosts. They're basically a cheat unto themselves, but not only that, they're actually just fun to build because it's like a little puzzle trying to figure out how it all goes together. So this one, I wanted to do two story just cause I thought, you know, it's a little bit more interesting than having it all on the one floor. So decided to do the ladder going up and especially cause when this, I guess the, what is it? Tiny living, was it, what was it called? Was it tiny living stuff? When that came out, we didn't even have ladders, which is just bizarre, right? Like when did ladders come in? It was after that, I think. Anyway, so it's really nice to have all this kind of stuff. And so I thought, let's do the, let's do a two story. Um, and I also really wanted this, this sunlight, uh, the sunlight skylight uh, on this house. But because we're trying to stick to the 32 tiles, it's kind of weird because the skylight is there. Then I had to put a window to look into the skylight. It does travel to the floor below as well, but uh, yeah, the way it has to work upstairs is a little funny. Also where the ladder is, I don't know if you guys noticed when I was doing that, that's actually not part of the same room uh, because if it was, that would be 33 tiles that we used. Or no, not 33, it would have been like 34 or something, I think, because I, I left out a couple tiles here and there. But it all worked. We managed to fit it in all within 32 tiles. It actually ends up being a home for two Sims that I think could comfortably live here. So I think it would work out all right. And I'm building this in uh, Henford on Bagley, mostly because I've been watching so much of Grand Designs lately. We've been watching the new season. When I say new, it was the one that came out last year. We finally got around to watching it. And you know, all the stuff they do in that show is usually pretty, I don't know, they, they kind of go way over the top with a lot of the stuff. But um, there was this one this one guy that was like building the house by himself. And it was like this, the, it wasn't a tiny home, but it kind of felt like it because it was like sort of wedged on this specific lot. It was more of a triangular shape, but it had this roof that sloped all the way down to the ground, which this one doesn't quite reach the ground. But you know, it was a little bit of an inspiration for the exterior of this build anyway. And I guess I was trying to figure out what I wanted this build to actually look like. And then I decided, because you see here, I'm trying to play with colors and and what I'm actually going to detail the outside of this build with. But then I was like, well, we're kind of in Henford on Bagley. Why don't we just like really lean into that and do like and just it was almost like a cottagey kind of home. You know, this really turns into like this full on like cottage core styled house. And we're using all the cottage living stuff. It was a lot of fun. I actually spent a lot of time on the entrance too, which at the moment I've just got this square archway. I don't know. I, I wanted like something a little bit more interesting for the entrance because we can't actually add more to the house because that will bump us up to, is it tiny home or small? I, I don't know, whatever the medium level is. Um, if we added more floor tiles, then we wouldn't be considered a micro home. So I had to just place the walls. I was like, okay, we can do an archway there, but it kind of, like at the moment, it looks very like contemporary styled more than something that would suit a cottage, but I think it turns out okay in the end. So I'm, I, you know, I think I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and then I'm just building this little sort of trellis thing here with the columns. It's all green. I feel like there's like 10 different shades of green on this house, which, you know, I feel like it, it works. <laughs> like, uh, uh, oh, man, this is one thing with The Sims 4 is like, it's great that we have, you know, this the shade of green on the windows that came with Strangeville. I love it, but doesn't match any of the other greens. Um, and there's nothing you can really do about it. So I just kind of went with it. I, you know, I leaned into the non-matching green colors. You know, that's the only way to sort of get around it. Or you don't use green and then you just sort of lean on the gray scale. But you know, we're going on the green scale and I think that works just fine. Uh, so we've got these sort of lighter green columns, this darker green little fencing on the top. I think the roof trim is also a different shade of green from everything else for some reason. I, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why that's the case, but it is. And I wanted to use, I was going to use that um, green 
You can see Spandrel from Strangerville. But of course the green Spandrel doesn't match the green columns from base game. And the Strangerville columns, I think are way, that was way too much. Like it's way too detailed and decorative for this build. Like this build has a lot going on on the outside in terms, like I put a lot of vines and stuff on the outside, but it doesn't really, like having columns that detailed seemed like too far. That was like too much. So I didn't do that. Instead, we just laid everything with vines and ivy and flowers and greenery. <laughs> and I think that works really well. Because uh, at the moment, uh, if you, well, we'll see the, I was gonna say, if you look at the back, you can't look at the back right now, but if you look at the back, it's a big flat wall. There's nothing happening about there. But we basically layer it with vines and, and ivy, and I think it actually turns out pretty dang good. <laughs> like, I actually quite like the look of this build in the end. It is in the town in Henford on Bagley, which I don't know if that's the best place, but it's the smallest lot in the world. All the others were like 20 by 30s or bigger, which which is fine. Like I, I love a big lot, but when you're trying to build a micro home, it typically is gonna look very out of place. Um, but yeah, <laughs> unless you, I guess unless you do like a lot of landscaping, but you know, we just did a smaller home here. Oh, this pathway up to this lot. Oh, you know, Deligracy made a video about the pathways to lots and I totally agree with it all. Like this, okay, most, the problem is most of the lots don't have like pathways leading up to them, at least in the newer worlds, they're kind of just grass in the middle of nowhere. This one has a pathway coming up to it, which is great, but, well, a couple of problems. One, there's no floor tile that matches it. Two, it doesn't line up with the grid. Like you can put flooring across, but then there's like extra width to it. So it doesn't line up. And I, I think we'll see a bit of it here when I try to like build up to it, but it just, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's great. Look, that, that hits the edge of the lot. So it's like, okay, we can connect to it, but nothing matches it. And I don't know. I just find it a little bit annoying. <laughs> well, <laughs> we, I, I think my best solution to it is to just pretend it doesn't exist because otherwise it drives you crazy. Yeah. So for the doorway, I actually, instead of doing that square arch, you saw I did the uh, sort of industrial loft uh, glassway, like four tile arch door, which I think actually looks pretty good. So actually putting all the vines over it and then we've got the little cottage door behind it. And then we're just absolutely caking this house in vines. <laughs> just lots of vines and plants because the wall is super flat. Like normally I'd probably move some walls around, change the shape a little bit, but especially with micro homes, if you're having all these weird shapes, there's like no room inside. So we just had to have this box I think we get a more interesting shape with the roof being sloped like that. And then also the entrance, I think does add a nice little bit of detail, which is good. So sort of working with that, honestly, looking from the front of this build, I actually really like it. <laughs> I really like it. I mean, if it was a bit bigger, I think I, I would like it too. But I think for a micro home, it, it worked out pretty well. I also put that vent there on the wall. As you can see that the vines are going around. I don't know. I thought it was a nice little detail. I don't know if it is, but I went with it. Now I also, Sort of at this point, I was like, I should probably figure out where stuff's actually going in this house because I only have windows on the front and the rest of the walls are all blank except for that skylight area. But we probably need to figure out where windows are going to go <laughs> because that's going to dictate like, you know, where furniture can go and what makes sense. Also, this ladder was kind of awkward because it's going up to the next floor in a space that doesn't actually have flooring. It didn't let me put it against the wall which is super annoying because I, I don't know, for some reason it did not like going against that wall because there's no floor tile above it technically. So it kind of has to stick out into the room, which is okay because it kind of acts as like a, a wall divider, which I kind of just, you know, use and put stuff. In. I think, I, what do I put next to it? Maybe a bookcase or something like that? I don't know, something along those lines. I think it works out okay. Uh, but yeah, this little kitchen, just going for the classic cottage living kitchen. Um, got everything you need, the stove, the fridge, the sink. There's no indoor bin. I do put one outside um, and the bathroom doesn't have a sink. So I mean, I feel like that's kind of the classic micro home build that I do is my bathroom just doesn't have a sink because all the kitchen doesn't have a sink, vice versa, because we just don't have room. <laughs> we just don't have room for two sinks. I mean, look, I'm sure I probably could have fit one in, but you know, I wanted the living space to be a little bit nice. You know, I wanted a nice dining area, a nice lounge area. And that's what I decided to go with instead of doing the sort of fully, I guess, fully featured bathroom. But yeah, like I said earlier, we are, this This is suitable for two sims. Like it's totally workable. I did play test the entire thing as well after I was done to make sure everything worked. Cause often when building these small homes, maybe things can kind of get put in weird spots and you're not sure if they're gonna work, but it all works, which is great. Now, 
At first, when I was doing this window at the end, I was like, oh, this is great. This is a beautiful living room space. That window is going to be fantastic. Uh, oh, yeah, here's a pathway that number one doesn't match. Number two doesn't even line up with the actual pathway. So kind of annoying, but let's just ignore that. Yeah, we have this big, beautiful window at the end. And I was like, that's great. We've got this, this nice living room window there, double window there. And then it kind of dawned on me. Um, I kind of I kind of need to actually put the bathroom in somewhere. Like in the back of my head, I was like, yeah, we'll do the bathroom, we'll do the bathroom, we'll do the bathroom, but never actually figured out where it was going to go until, until until I did this and I realized, oh yeah, the upstairs is the bedroom, not the bathroom. So, yeah. <laughs> and then at this point, I was like, okay, I'm going to ignore that and just put this window here instead. And then we'll figure out the rest later. <laughs> and then unfortunately, as typically happens, later arrived and we had to solve that problem. And this is where you can see that me looking around and turning the camera, I was like, Oh yeah, mm, that bathroom. So we did a one by three bathroom here at the end, which unfortunately take, takes that big, beautiful window and just puts it into a bathroom. Now, yeah, I could have done it the bathroom the other way, like behind the ladder, a one by three, but then I was like, that makes the living room really thin, which is a shame. So really the best place, I mean, maybe I could have shifted the kitchen down and have the bathroom at the back of the house, but Given what I had already done and planned out, the bathroom made the most sense in this space uh, at the end, which didn't have much in it besides the nice window. I did consider changing it to a smaller window because it was the bathroom, but looking from the outside of the house, it looked really bad not having a nice window there. So we just went with a big window. I think I did do blinds over it, so we don't have to worry about that. Just had the open shower so they can enter from the front and that's not a problem. Yeah, I think I just did, yeah, just a blind. I think it, it the blind I think I used maybe doesn't, Oh, actually, that's not so bad. Say, maybe it doesn't suit the house that well, but that's actually not that bad. It's not great, though. It's really not great. But anyway, a little bathroom there. Like I said, no sink in it, but it all works. I also decided to add a laptop there to the dining table. So there is a computer in the house, but it doesn't take up an extra spot. And obviously, you can take the laptop and move around or whatever. Um, and then just next to the ladder here, I was like, we should probably have some sort of bookshelf. I could have done the smaller books on a shelf somewhere. I think I do a stack of books up here anyway for the bedroom, but... Yeah. Now, like I said earlier, looking at the back of the house, it's so dang flat. So I was like, let's do one of these uh, cottage living like window bays that come with the flower planter. Because, I mean, that just, it look, first of all, it looks like a balcony, which is great. Adds that little bit of depth and detail. And it's it's got more plants on it, which is basically what we're doing in this house. Just cover it with plants. That is the way. And then I also kind of rediscovered the wisteria, which I kind of forgot existed. So I started putting that around the house too, which makes a lot of sense in this neighborhood, which is great. But yeah, honestly, with such a flat build on all sides, I actually think it came out surprisingly well. Like I am more than more than happy with how it turned out. I mean, maybe the sunroof doesn't really make a whole lot of sense on this house, but I kind of liked it. So that's why we had it there. It, it is a bit strange. Uh, it's the thing that's m most unlike the rest of the house, like this big window in the bedroom that um, I guess not only looks outside, but also looks down into the living room. Uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> now this bed, it looks like it's a bit squished and it may not work, but I, like I said, I did play test it, it works. It does have to sit a little bit into the wall at the back of the build. So you can see when the walls are up, the actual like bed head is sort of inside the wall, which is a trick I use sometimes on these smaller builds and it works. Maybe it's not, you know, everyone's favorite thing to do to hide stuff in walls, but you know, it, it works for what it is. Um, yeah, I think the bedroom is is fine. Like, I, I think it's good. Like, it's not like fantastic, but we got the dresser uh, over here in the corner with some clothes hanging. Got a couple of bedside tables, got the bed. You know, we could do maybe even like a TV on the wall above the ladder. I don't know if that would work, but you could probably do that. So I think there's definitely potential to have like this fully featured bedroom. Now the ladder, in the middle of the night, also being on the far wall, probably, and also having no fence around it, probably not a great thing. Uh, not great. <laughs> It'd probably be incredibly dangerous. But I mean, I guess you get used to it. So it is what it is. Maybe, maybe like a, a trap door over it in, in reality would probably make sense. So you could put it down so that not only can you use that space, but you don't fall down. it. That would probably, that would probably make sense, I think. But in this build, you know, can't do that. So yeah, I mean, I think it's a cute little bedroom. We got like a rug, I think actually did I put, yeah, I did put a rug. I've got the rug, bedside tables, nice blinds, artwork. I think it all really came together. I mean, the only thing I didn't really do on this build was the sort of landscaping around the lot, but I might do a little bit of that at the end of this time lapse because I haven't actually done that yet. I think we could probably use a few plants here and there. Okay, so here we are in the little tiny, oh, you know what? I said I put a bin in, I didn't. 
<laughs> I did, but I don't think I actually saved it when I did it. Um, hmm. Wait. Oh, actually, I wonder if I can put it in here. I wonder if this would be usable. Like here. I hope so. I feel like it would be. Yeah, so the, with the pathway, this one's, it's nice because it joins, but for some reason they made it half a tile wider. <laughs> and if they had just shifted it so it lined up with the grid, that wouldn't be a problem. So I, I don't know why it's quite like that, but anyway, so ignore that problem. Yeah, so I'll just give you a little tour of the build because uh, it's sometimes hard to see in the time lapse, but here it is, big sloping roof. Got the uh, little skylight into the bedroom there, which is kind of cool. Also goes down to the living room. Uh, a couple of solar panels, well, four solar panels on the top. Uh, lots of vines, nothing on this end of the house, but I think that looks good. Uh, lots of stuff going on in the back. You can also pee outside if the inside bathroom's taken. And yeah, that's the little house on the outside. And then inside, whoops, inside we've got the little kitchen. I think this is like super cozy. I think it's actually really nice. Little table here that looks out that window. A couple of armchairs. Uh, I didn't mention, but I use the armchairs because all the other couches Number one, either too big or just didn't match the style at all. So I think the armchairs actually worked really well. Little TV, bookcase, a ladder goes up there. Little bathroom and shower, well, toilet and shower. Upstairs, the bed and the bedroom, which I think is actually really nice. So outside, I don't really want to do too much. Maybe we could do like a coop or something. You know, just have a few things going on out here. Actually, maybe, wait, which side has, this side has nothing going on. Yeah, over here. Should we have it like... No, I don't want to be against the house. Maybe like over here. There's something kind of interesting going on. You know, just a little little bit of intrigue. Nothing nothing too much. Uh, let's do... I'm not actually going to fence these in. I, I feel like I don't need to. So I'm not going to. But yeah, I'm just going to have a little hedge there. It looks like the world's kind of got these trees around the place. I'm going to actually scale one of these down. Maybe just at the back there. Yeah, it just adds like a nice little... Nice little thing to look at over this way. Oh yeah, maybe one of these. This is fun. Yeah, let's do maybe some like gardening over this side or maybe maybe we're actually around the back here. Yeah, let's go get this guy just here. And here's a couple of the flat beds. Let's pop them there. Yeah. Oh, let's put a little bucket down. I definitely feel like having this all open in real life would probably be a really bad idea, but it's just what we're going with. So just do a little bit of painting for the terrain and then maybe just a few bushes around the place. Like I, I don't want to... Don't think I want to overdo anything here. I might actually open this up a little bit. Maybe do this. That looks strange. <laughs> yeah, maybe this way. That's the exact same. Uh, okay, let's maybe not do that then. Let's do that. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, just honestly, just really simple. Because then it also gives you room to add stuff. But I think that that, that just kind of completes it, I think. Because now we've got the little chicken coop there. Couple things at the back. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Little grass there, maybe some lavender over this side. I don't know, just, just like that. Yeah, that's it. Now it blends in, kind of. I mean, the, the style of the build is vastly different to all the houses here, but you know, these are the new kids on the block that have moved in and built their little tiny home. But yeah, I'm gonna leave this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little micro home, 32 tiles, so you get all the bonuses. And you know what? We might even use this house in some of the scenarios. That might, actually might be a good idea. Uh, for the ones that we're not trying to earn money, this would just be a good like skill boosting house. So we'll look into that. But if you wanna download this house, you can click the link in the description down below, or you can search for it on the gallery under James Turner YT, all one word, and you'll find it there. But thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time and have an awesome day.